Good morning. Welcome to WHBC TV. I'm Dr. Tadeo Boboy, the lead pastor of Wemma Heights. I greet you with Christ's joy this morning. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And that's what we are doing this morning. So excited to be in the most exciting place, praising a super exciting God this morning. Hallelujah. And that's what we come to do this morning. We're so ready and pumped uh, to uh, just let the Spirit of God move and, and continue to bring revival and, and, and set our hearts on fire uh, in these perilous times that we live in, uh, in this world and in our city and, and all over the world. We're glad that you've come to join us this morning. It's so good to be back again in the house of the Lord after we've been away on our, our, our vacation. Uh, but we're, we're so ready to uh, to bring the word of God and for you to join us uh, in this wonderful time of worship with God's people at Wilmer Heights and we're resuming back in our series uh, in the book of First Peter that we're calling Hope Alive Hope Alive even in the midst of chaos and decadence God promised that our hope can be alive and can come alive again uh, because Christ in us the hope of glory hallelujah Hallelujah. And this morning, we're continuing on uh, where we left off uh, in 1 Peter chapter 3 with a message entitled, Five Things That Your Husbands Want You To Know But Won't Tell You. Five Things He Wants You To Know But Won't Tell You. But the Apostle Peter is going to be helping him to tell you in uh, part 3 this morning. Why don't you invite a friend, share this, and let people know that Wellman Heights Baptist Church is alive. And Pastor Ty is about to bring the Rema word. Receive the word and I'll come back and pray with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you're joining us, I've been teaching on 1 Peter chapter 3. What your husband wants you to know but won't. And the Apostle Peter has been telling you for him. And we've done two preachings so far on 1 Peter 3. But before we pick up from where we left off, I want to give you a quick recap. For the benefit of those who need a recap uh, to catch up on where we've been. Uh, take a look at this. Number one. Submit to him. Oh. Uh oh. Ladies, I get it. The word submission gives you a great consternation. Or is it constipation? I don't know. We don't. I, 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 I know there has been a lot of misunderstanding over what it means for a wife to submit to a husband. I know that. I live in your world. Biblical submission is never about inequality or lordship. It's never been about me being up here and her being down here. Submission is headship. Ah, I brought you all back around. Now, what is headship? Submission. In the house has to do with order in the house somebody say order but there's an unbelievable divine power in submission there's a redemptive power in submission that can change your husband a lot more quicker than you beating your chest and shaking your hips at him here, here it is here it is number two this is good respect him see it in verse two see it in verse two it says respect him see in verse two as they observe your chaste and what don't you know that a man's greatest need is not love a man's greatest need is for respect R E S P Ha 
haven't said that how many of you know that God isn't asking you to respect your man for the jerk that he is now but the Lord is asking you to show that husband of yours respect for the man of God that he may one day become number three this is good someone said juicy one is coming put it up number three dazzle him who dazzle him see what Peter says in verse 3 again he says and let your adornment must not be merely that word merely is the key he's saying don't let your beautification be only the fixing up of the outside he's saying give me the lifeline please snap this too on your phone ladies this is good give me the lifeline he's saying just as you don't let yourself go on the outside you don't let the woman on the inside down too that's what by peter says in verse 4 first peter 3 verse 4 it says let it also be the hidden person the hidden person verse 4 the hidden person of the heart in other words if the house needs painting paint the house but don't stop outside go inside the house too and furnish the house and deck it up with the two things that are left for me to talk to you about the next time we get together and everybody said And we're back together again, church. If you're married or if you're single, hopefully by now you're learning from the Apostle Peter that a wedding is one thing and a marriage is another. I, I know a lot, a lot of couples I know a lot, all couples dream of a fairy tale relationships uh, where, where you both ride off into the, into, the, into the sunset and live a happily ever after life. <laughs> where you won't have problems, no disappointments, no heartaches. You, you know, when you're single, you start thinking about marriage and you think the Kool Aid. Is going to start coming out of your water fountains but what is coming out is water oh, talk to me somebody you, you you look at married people who seems like they're happily ever after and you say oh aren't they romantic i'd love to be married like pastor ty and lady miriam they are so happy all the time. They, they are smiling all the time. We may be smiling all the time. But can I tell you, there are times we want to kill each other too. Oh, 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 oh. You, 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 all, don't want to, you all don't want me to be real to you this morning. The Joneses. You'd love to be married like. Maybe smiling all the time when you see them in public. But I dare you to go home with them. And you would see a Canada Day fireworks in October. <laughs> Have you ever seen a fake smile? Meanwhile, the Joneses you want to marry like are fighting in the car on their way to church. But as soon as they see you in the parking lot, oh, the lot is good. Sister Mary, the lot is good. All the time, the lot is good. 
come on. I, I'm trying to help somebody here understand that a wedding is one thing and a marriage is something else entirely. And in a narcissistic society, where a narcissistic girl meets a narcissistic boy and they get married, trying to become one never works. Because biblical marriage is about sacrifice. Oh, you're not hearing me. Marriage is not about you making him happy. Any more than marriage is about her making you happy. Oh, no, no, no. Give me the light point. You're doing well, Jordan. Give me the light point. Marriage is about commitment. It's about committing yourself to what God is uniting. Ooh. That's a rima word for somebody who is struggling in a relationship right now. People often ask me, how did you and Lady Miriam make it through 28 years? You want to know a well-kept secret? I tell her, yes, dear, to everything she says. No... That's not it. I tell people we're married this long because we believe in something bigger than ourselves. Oh, you missed that. See, see, when you believe in something bigger than what you can do just by both of you, then you will fight for that something bigger. Come hell or I water. Oh, oh, I wish I had me some witnesses in this place. I'm talking about I'm talking about doing marriage God's way, even though life happens and storm comes and disappointment creeps in. But because you've both made a commitment before your God that you'll be content in whatever state you are in. For better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness till that do oh oh I I I feel like I'm still in a wedding mood here this morning. So that no matter what you're both going through, you know that with God on your side and with the all powerful God in your corner, then it don't matter what you're going through. You know this too shall in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, I wish I had me some couples in here who can who can testify that you're shouting and praising God right now, not because everything in your relationship is going right. You're shouting and praising God. Not because everything you wanted your man to be, he has already become. Not because everything you want your woman to be, she has already become. But you're shouting because you have a bottom line called commitment. You're shouting because on Christ, a solid rock, you stand in. And all other ground, all other ground. And though the storm is raging, and though the devil is working hard on your relationship, you know that as Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, that God is working all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And I am wondering... Do I have two or three of those folk who love the Lord here in this house? Amen. Shout yes! yes! Tell your neighbor, my hope is in the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. <laughs> my hope is in the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. So, 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 my brothers and my sisters, as we come to 1 Peter chapter 3 this morning, Simon Peter 
an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ is reminding us and the Christians that he's writing to about where our hopes and their hopes should be in the midst of the vicissitude of married life. Ladies, this message is still for you. Don't worry, the men's turn will come starting next Sunday. When Peter will begin to talk to us men. And so, so you can be the ones clapping and shouting, preach it, pastor. <laughs> but, but so far, Pastor Peter has told you three things that your husband wants you to know but won't tell you. And now, ladies, are you ready for the fourth thing he wants to tell you for your man? Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, where are all my men? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Tell, 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 tell the lady next to you, ready or not, ready or not. Thank you, Mr. Bolland. Here it is, here it is. The fourth thing your husband wants to, you to know but won't tell you. Number four, stop nagging him. Uh oh! And every man here said, eh? Hey. <laughs> okay. The reason why you could only hear Uncle Tim's voice is because his wife is not here. <laughs> See it in verse 4. See it in verse 4. See it in verse 4. It says, if your beauty is not to be merely external, then let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and which is precious in the sight of good God of heaven. Notice Peter didn't tell you to preach to your man. He doesn't tell you to stick Bible verses on the bottom of his beer cans saying, Repent! He <laughs> doesn't tell you to pin gospel tracts on his pillow in his bed saying, Away thou that drinketh! <laughs> I'm not reading here, Mother Morgan. He's not saying, Call Pastor Ty and have him come to your house loaded with the Bible guns <laughs> when you know your husband is going to be home alone by himself. Yeah. Peter didn't tell you to do none of that. You know why? Because no one <laughs> is ever, no one who is ever been nagged into the kingdom. No one is ever nagged into the kingdom. No one. Let me ask you. Have you ever seen or met anybody that got nagged into the kingdom? Come on. You got you to gotta give your life to Jesus today. Otherwise you're going to hell. No, no. I'm, I don't mean you. I'm just... <laughs> and after so many years... Of your nagging him, he says to you, All right, I'll give my life to Jesus today. No, it don't happen that way. But do you know someone who, in response to your gentle and quiet spirit, was driven and drawn to Jesus? The person is probably sitting next to you right now. Oh, I, I, I know, I know I got me some gentle and quiet sisters in this house. Mm, I got me some gentle and quiet sisters in this house. I've been here 15 years, I know all of you. <laughs> and some of you, I know you can speak a thousand words per second. And your man, only say one. 
You know a mouthy woman? A mouthy woman? Don't you? Why do you have to say something every time somebody says something to you? Don't you know that Proverbs chapter 29 verse 11 says, put it up, a fool uttereth all his mind. But a wise man or a wise woman keepeth it in till afterwards. Ooh, I like that. Oh, oh, that's a good verse. You better, you better snap it on your phone. Meaning, there are times there are times, listen to me very carefully, there are times you don't have to say nothing. You, you don't have to say everything that is on your mind. There are times when you just keep it in. But Listen, it's not saying don't say it, but there's a time you keep it in till afterwards. <laughs> oh, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. Who, who, who am I talking to in this place? Tell the person next to you, take a chill pill, take a chill pill, take a chill pill. Uh -huh. Take a chill pill. Take a chill pill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take a chill pill. Because James chapter 1 verse 20 says to tell you, for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of... Take a chill pill. Because nagging your man won't change him. Ladies, that's what Peter is telling you here. Let me let you in on a little secret, ladies, about the male ego. I mean, I, I, I know a lot about, more about guys than I do you women because I'm a guy. I'm a man. <laughs> as far as we men go, Men don't like to be told what to do. Amen. Especially, especially if you're telling them the same things umpty times. Am I right, fellas? Am I right? Watch this. It shuts us down. Nothing drives a man crazy, more crazy than a woman who is constantly nagging him. I hear you. <laughs> King Solomon, King Solomon, who probably knew a thing or two about nagging wives. You know, the Bible tells us he had 700 wives. <laughs> And 300 concubines? Dickin, Dickin, Dickin. For the life of me, I don't know what a man would do with 700 wives. <laughs> and 300 concubines. No, no, concubines. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, concubines. But this brother have only one. And I'm still working on the one that I got. <laughs> And you're talking about 700. Solomon, God bless you. <laughs> Watch this. But Solomon, who knows a thing or two about the spirit of a nagging woman and what the spirit of a nagging woman can do to a man, says in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 19, put it up. It says, it is better to live in a desert Ah, I, I hope, I hope, I, I hope I, I get to go home this afternoon. <laughs> it is better to live in a desert than to live with a contentious and vexing woman. Another word for vexing is nagging. Come on, ladies, that's serious. He's saying when a woman keeps giving heat to a man, 
I don't care how strong a man you are. After a while, if you keep getting that heat, you will drop. <laughs> that man will lose weight quickly from the heat exhaustion he's getting from you. And any man you see dropping suddenly, you need to stop and ask his wife. <laughs> Stop and ask his wife what happened. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Auntie Diane, I'm not making this up. It's here in Proverbs chapter 19, verse, te- verse, verse 13 too. It's there. Look at it. It says, a foolish son is destruction to his father. And the contentions of a wife are a constant drip, 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 drip. That word is nagging. Nagging, nagging. Drip, drip, contention, fighting, fighting, fighting all the time. You, you're talking about, yeah. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Let me get my hips. I'm going to show you. I, I'm, the daughter, I'm the daughter of my father. Th- that's my Nigeria. I'm the, I'm the daughter of my father. <laughs> Shut your... Ladies, can I be practical with you for a minute? I know I have been, but, 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 but allow me, indulge me in this one. Let me, let me, I want you to think practical now, to think practically now, because that's what Peter is trying to get you to do here. How long have you been nagging your husband to clean that garage or to fix something in your marriage? How long? Since the day you got married to him, right? You've been telling him to stop snoring. No, 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 no. You, you've been telling him to stop throwing. You've been telling him to stop throwing his dirty clothes on the, on the bedroom floor. Yes, you've been nagging him about the same thing. And he's still doing it. She wants to know why. Come back next week when we start talking to the men. <laughs> but has it ever occurred to you by now that you probably need a new strategy? Not a new husband. <laughs> Not a new computer. Because that old computer is still got some good gigabytes in him. <laughs> He's just not responding to new commands right now. And the new strategy, watch this, this is not a joke. The new strategy that Simon Peter is giving you here in our text is, don't say a word anymore. <laughs> you missed it. Don't say a word anymore. Say nothing. I didn't make it up. It's there in verse 1. Give me verse 1. You need, you, when you read, you just read quickly. You don't pay attention to what we're reading. In the same way you wives be submissive to your own husband so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be one without, without, <laughs> tell, tell a lady next to you don't say anything anymore don't, don't, don't say a word don't say a word don't say a word don't say a word don't, don't say a word anymore meaning meaning watch this meaning you can win him you can win him without a word just by your behavior What behavior? The gentle and quiet spirit of verse 4. Give me, Lady Sasha, give me five. You're, you're jetting with me. I wish your husband was here. Come on, somebody. God is giving, God is saving someone's marriage here today or relationship today by the words of scripture that are coming out of my mouth. 
Give me the lifeline. Don't you know that actions still speaks louder? How many of you know that sometimes the best sermons are not the ones you hear? The, the best sermons are the ones you Oh, 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 I know I'm preaching good this morning. Ladies, what I'm trying to say to you is, what I'm trying to say to you is, in a very gentle and, and, and loving way as your spiritual father of this house, men don't like their wives to be their supervisors. Ah, Unless he's a passive woman. Oh, sorry, unless he's it's a passive man. He's seen enough supervisors and managers where he works. And he tells me to tell you he don't like them. And now when he comes home, you want to be a supervisor of him. No, instead of being a supervisor, be a super lover. Because how do you expect him to be the man in the house? The man in the house if you're the one wearing the pants. Uh, don't look at me funny. I'm teaching you what the word of God says. No, no, no. Don't be your man's pastor. Don't. Don't be your man's pastor. Be your man's suitor. I'm helping a sister in this place. Stop preaching to him. Stop trying to turn your house into a church. A man needs a castle. Where he can be a king. Thank you, thank you. I hear you too. When you when you start talking about when you start talking about when you start talking about ah 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 ah, ah, ah and using your pastor against him and, and talking about boy, you should have heard Doctor Ty today. <laughs> he really preached about you. <laughs> Man, I, I wish you were in church. I wish you were in church and, and hear him talk about what it means to be a real man. <laughs> you know what Peter is saying that will do to him? That will make him hate church the more. That won't win him. Because the man must be, Jordan, put the next slide up. The man must be the lion king. <laughs> A man must be the lion king in his castle. And you throwing your pastor at his face is only going to drive him away further from Jesus. Oh, hear me, ladies. Hear me, ladies. With all my love to you. Peter isn't saying you're to be a zombie. That is going around, you know, so calm. Like you've took a fistful of tranquilizer. <laughs> he isn't saying you should be a mummy. Walking dead. As if you're not a moral intelligent agent. Who can talk. That's not what he's saying. Peter isn't saying you should go into a robotic mood. But he is saying... When a man sees his wife come home 
and she has a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of God. Ooh, you know when he says precious in the sight of God? He's saying that's what God is going to use. Something precious. He says when, you, when he comes in and you come home and she, she, he, sees a, 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 he sees a gentle and quiet spirit, you know what he's going to say to you? He's going to say, honey, I don't know what they're teaching you down at that Wilmer Heights Baptist Church. But you better go down there and get more of that. He's not going to fight you for trying to go to church. And for not being around. Oh, no, 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 no. Peter is saying to tell you, he is no fool. He is no fool. Your man may be hard-hearted, but he is no fool. You may be married to a, 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 an old goat, but that old goat ain't no fool. Because verse 2 says, look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, he's observing. <laughs> he's watching. He's not blind. He could be hard-hearted, but he's not blind. He's observing. He's watching your chaste and respectful behavior. And if you just keep living for Jesus, if you just keep him and put, and you keep putting your faith and hope in God, and if you just keep showing him the beauty of Jesus Christ that lives on the inside of you, then Simon Peter says to tell you in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15, that after a while, that unresponsive husband of yours is going to come to you and is going to ask you, where did you get that hope that is in you? He's going to ask you, why do you love me the way you love me? Why? And then you're going to be able to tell him, it's Christ in you. The hope of glory you're going to be able to tell him jesus is your rock you're going to be able to tell him jesus is your strength you're going to be able to tell him jesus is your living hope you're going to be able to tell him jesus is your healer and he will say to you he will say to you just give me jesus just give me jesus just give oh i feel breakthrough here in this place I feel breakthrough here in this place. I know some of you ladies are quiet, but the Holy Spirit is working on you right now. I feel chains are being broken right now. I feel atmosphere shifting right now. I feel healing rain coming down right now. Somebody who can feel the Holy Ghost touching your situation right now. Go ahead and give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah! Ooh, let me quickly hurry up and give you my fifth and final point. Watch this. Is this message helping, blessing anybody? Okay, watch this. If the first point is submit to him and the second is respect him and the third is dazzle him and the fourth that we just heard is stop nagging him. Then the fifth point I'm about to give you sums it all up. Put it up. Number five. Help him. Ooh, that's even gooder. Help him. Look at it in verse five and six. First Peter 3, 5 and 6. Look at it. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also who hoped in God, not who hoped in their nagging. Some women think nagging is what will get his attention. Peter said, no. It's going to drive him so far away from Jesus, he won't even know what hit you. 
But he said, the, 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 in, in, in the former times, the, old, the only women also who hoped in God, not hoped in their nagging, but hoping God. Somebody say hoping God. Used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. Verse 6, this is where I'm going. Does Sarah obey Abraham? Calling him and you have become our children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. Good God of heaven. Ladies, I, I, I know what you're thinking now. You're looking at your husband and you're saying, if he thinks I'm going to start calling him Lord, then he is he, really, really crazy than I thought. <laughs> you may be thinking Sarah must have been a pushover woman, a soft woman, calling Abraham Lord. But I am a woman. Hear me roar. I'm a woman. Hear me roar. Stop that. Stop that. That lion. Stop that. That lion is really hungry. And he's really hungry. He, he, he started to bark. It's no more roaring. Yeah. My wife heard that when I was playing. He said, is that a lion? Why is he barking? <laughs> no. No. Sarah is no pushover woman. You don't know Sarah. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. She, 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 she was a strong-willed woman. She knew how and when to draw the line in the sand. <laughs> and yet, remained submissive to Abraham. Yeah. Auntie Diane, you know, we, we always put Bible characters in a pedestal than the Bible paints. If anything from Genesis to Revelation, God is showing us that man is warped. And apart from the grace of God, <laughs> so go I. Abraham was no saint. The Bible never called Abraham Saint Abraham. What the Bible called Abraham is Father Abraham. And you know what happens when you're a father. <laughs> No, 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 no. Abraham wasn't a saint that somehow the Bible would applaud Sarah for being such, such, such a, such a, 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 a saint herself. She wasn't a pushover woman. <laughs> you, you remember Genesis chapter 20? The soap opera? When Abraham had relations with Agar, who was Sarah's maid, and Agar got pregnant with Ishmael, what did Abraham, what did Sarah did to Abraham? No, she didn't kill him. She didn't chop off his, uh, no, 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 no. But almost did. What Sarah did was she stood her ground and says to Abraham, get that woman and her son out of here or I will kill you. Oh, it was a soap opera, all right? There she stood her ground. But when Sarah, 
listen to me very carefully, needed to be a help a meet that God had called her to be for Abraham. The Bible tells us that she obeyed Abraham without flinching. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. You say, Pastor, where, where in the Bible did Sarah obey Abraham? I'll give you a chapter and a verse. Genesis 12, 11. Quickly, we're almost done. And it came about when he came near Egypt that he, that's Abraham, said to Sarai, his wife, now I know that you are a beautiful woman. Get this picture, ladies. Get this picture. Sarah was somewhere in her 70s in Genesis chapter 12. And the Bible says she was still a hot mama. Even when she was 90, Mom, even when she was in her 90s, Genesis chapter 20 tells us she was just still as beautiful. She was still a hot mama. Ladies, wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to be, wouldn't you still like to be a hot mama at 90? I, I know some of you are hot mamas now. I know you're hot mamas now. But wouldn't you still love to be a hot mama? Uh, reminds me of a 90 year old man a 90 year old guy who had a bit who was a bit hard of hearing and, and was having a chest pain so so he went to the doctor uh, and the doctor sent him for a test and a few weeks later a few weeks later the doctor saw him this old man walking through the park holding hands with a young lady young beautiful lady and he's just smiling and the doctor approached the old man and says, well, you look much better now than the last time I saw you. What happened? And the old man replied, well, doc, I took your advice. You told me to go get a hot mama and be cheerful. The doctor shake his head and said, no, 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 no. I told you you have a hot mama. Be careful. It works. Thank you. But it works. It works. B back to Genesis 12. Back to Genesis 12. So, 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 Sarah was a knockout. She was a hot mama. Keep reading verse 12. To hear what Abraham is telling her to do. And then she obeyed. Watch this, verse 2, 12. Give me verse 12. And when the Egyptians see you, because them Egyptians know a hot mama when they see one. <laughs> when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Let's kill him. But they will let you live. So watch this. Abraham says to Sarah in verse 13, when they ask you who you are, let's just say you're my sister. <laughs> Tell them you're my sister, not my wife, my sister, so that I don't get killed. <laughs> and the Bible says, Sarah answered, Yes, dear. Yes, my Lord. I'll do it. And she did what she was told. Wait a minute. Now, now, I know my wife. I've been married to her for 28 years. Can you imagine me selling a plan like that to Lady Miriam? If my life depended on it? And she says, yes, honey. Forget about her calling me Lord. 
yes, yes there, I'll do it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I know my wifey ain't going to buy that to save my skin. Because she knows that when she married me, I promised her for better or for worse. Not for better or for a trade. I lost somebody. Dickie Neal, do, do, do you think Lady Charlene would buy that if you tell her to say she's your sister? I, I hope not. But the Bible is using Sarah here, watch this, as an illustration of a wife who was a help meet to her husband here. She could have finished Abraham a half and said, I remember what you did to me. You went off with my, my maid. No, 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 no. I'm his wife. Kill him. I wanted to do it, but God won't let me do it. Do it for me. <laughs> she could have sold him out. She could have finished Abraham off here, even though he was about to make a great mistake. She could have said to Abraham, hey, Abraham, Ab, 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 you, 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 you know I love you. But Hab, this is where the love stops. You're on your own, dude. But the Bible said she went along with a plan because she was putting a hope in God. Oh, you didn't hear me. Not in her husband. Because she knows there's no good that could come out of Abraham. Who is this message for this morning? Ladies, do you know that you can either be your man's completer or his competitor? Which one are you? There are times your husband may need you to say, this is wrong and draw the line in the sand. And there are times your husband may need you even when he's moving in the wrong direction. Sarah did both for Abraham. See, this is why God says in the, at the beginning in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, God says it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help I can't hear your help. What? Now, now, most of you want to say help mate. Change that word. The Bible never say help mate. Help meet. Ooh. That word is deep. Kemi, Lady Kemi, that word is deep. Men, 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 I need to talk to you now. I need to talk to you now. Where are my men in the house? I, 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 I know your turn is coming next week. And you dare not miss church. But, but man, if you're sitting next to your woman, look at her in the eyes. If you're sitting next to your, look at her in the hair. I, I, I know black, black people don't like to look at each other in the eye, but look at each other. <laughs> I, I, man, 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 I need you to say to your wife, I need you to say to your wife, babe, I need you. Babe, I need you. Babe, I need you. Ooh, isn't that romantic? Did, did he say that to you? Oh, that's good. Isn't that romantic? Babe, I need you. See, God knows I'm seriously going to need help. Big time. Lots of help. And that's why in his grace and in his divine provision, Give me this beautiful woman as my wife. I'm so grateful to the Lord because without this woman, he's given me the gentle, gorgeous woman. I don't know where I'll be today.
what, 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 I'm, what I'm saying to you is, I won't be who I am today without my wife. You want a healthy pastor? You want a pastor that is growing and vibrant in the Lord? Pray for his wife. Because if his wife is healthy and makes the home healthy, your power oh, will come on. Your, your. The Bible said, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. Oh. Church, would you help me appreciate your pastor's wife, Lady Marian, this morning? Gentlemen, here's what I want, I want to say to you, gentlemen. Next week is your time, but I needed to interject this. If God has given you a help meet, meet, not mate, and you keep shutting her down, and you keep shutting her out, then you're shutting out and shutting down your divine help. <laughs> when God said it's not good for a man to be alone I will make a help sweet table for him God knew what he was doing that a man is going to need lots of help and when he brings you your help meet and you keep shutting her off and keep shutting her down let me tell you something don't you see she's the part of you that makes you better than what you are and what you could be? Do you think the Bible said what it says for nothing in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30? It says one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight. So, so, so when you keep shutting your wife down, let me ask you, man. How many do you want to put to flight in the battles you're facing? A thousand? <laughs> Would you rather settle for a thousand when you can go for ten thousand better than you can do on your own? But where are all my ten thousand men in this house? All at your boy. Oh, oh, oh I, I thank God. I thank God that the most valuable divine asset I have is my wife. My helpmeet. God gave her to me to be my weak side. See, it's the devil's tactics to make you want to compete. Ladies, it's the devil's tactics to make you want to compete with your man. A man is the devil's tactics to make you want to compete with your woman. No, 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 no. A while back, I was driving along Lawrence. And I was getting ready to make a right turn. And I have to admit, my mind was preoccupied. And I was in the wrong lane trying to make a right turn. That means I wasn't in the right position for where I was going. But I made a right turn anyways. I'll be it. I almost got killed. Because I was talking on my cell phone and I was trying to write a, a thought that came to me for my message. If you know me, my kids are always like that. Don't write. At the same time while I was driving. How many of you multitask like me? Okay. So preoccupied. I go, oh, oh, that's my turn. And I turned. I turned all right, but I probably got cursed by somebody who was giving me a holy finger. But if I had my other half with me, honey, we're driving on the road, we're driving on the road. We're driving on the road. We're driving on the road. Tell me when to turn. Tell me, tell, me when to, tell me when to turn. Okay, okay, I'm turning. I'm turning. I'm turning. Watch this. Watch this. 
See, see what I'm talking about. She's at my blind side, my blind spot. I don't have to see it if she sees it. <laughs> Why? Because she's my help. I trust her judgment. And we're going in the same direction. Driving in the same car. If she tells me to turn right, and I turn right, when I'm, so, I'm not supposed to turn right, and we get in a crash, guess whose side? <laughs> Do you think she doesn't care for her life? And our life? The reason why us men don't trust our wives. Oh. Come back next week. I, I haven't said that most of you won't come back next week. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. I don't have to know it if she knows it. I don't have to be good at it if she's good at it. Oh, you're not hearing me. It's called complimenting each other. But if we're both sitting behind the wheel, <laughs> it won't work. One of us have to be on the other side, the other position, for us to benefit from having each other. So that when God says in Genesis 2 verse 18, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a help meet Swimming for him. God is saying, he has given her to me to complete me, not to compete with me. He gave me, Lady Marian, as my help meet to fill the part. Remember something is missing here? To fill the part of me that's missing. To be my completer, not my competitor. To complete me, but not finish me off. Thank you, Lady Miriam. <laughs> and you know there are some ladies who think it's their God-given calling to finish off their men off. I'm not talking about anybody in here. I, I heard, I heard uh, Jaja Gabor, uh, uh, the great woman Jaja Gabor, said this once about herself my calling in life is not to be a housekeeper but to be a house cleaner oh you know what she meant she was married to nine husbands she had nine men and 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 she cleaned all of them out <laughs> i don't know who this message is for as i close but God is saying to a lady here that he's not calling you to be a Jaja Gabor to your man that he's given you. But he's calling you to be a daughter of Sarah to your Abraham. So that even you, if your Abraham is taking advantage of you, God says to tell you, like Sarah, you have nothing to fear. Mm. Give me the lifeline. Instead of fear, have faith in God. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God like Sarah. Not in yourself, but put your hope in God. And watch God take care of you. Yes, he will take care of you. Yes, he will take care of you. I say yes, he will take care of you in Jesus' name. Where are all my daughters of Sarah in this house? If the word that I've been speaking to you is for you, stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Worship him.
I told you I was going to do that. Wow, welcome back, welcome back. What a mighty word. A rhema word and now word for somebody here this morning. I don't know where you are in your relationship, in that marriage, but I'm coming this morning. I've come this morning to impart the word of God into your life and to let you know that the best is still yet to come in your life. Though the devil is do, working hard in your relationship this morning, but you can go back and take it back. You can take back whatever the enemy has stolen from you and begin to rebuke the spirit of, 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 of nagging, the nagging spirit and the disrespectful spirit and the abusive spirit and all those uh, 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 insub insubordination spirit that is destroying your marriage. God is able, if we take time to, to, to go into his word and let his word get into us, we will see amazing things. It's not over yet. God is not calling you to check out on that relationship because he promised that in two days, the word of God says in two days, I will revive you. And in the third day, I will raise you up again. That is my prayer for you this morning. That you'll be raised up again in that relationship. And God will be able to get the glory. So this morning we talked about the fourth thing that your husband wants you to know. Which is stop nagging him. And then the fifth one is <laughs> help him. Help him. And when you help him to become the man that God is calling him to be. You, a daughter of Sarah will be the most blessed and the most victorious hallelujah well let me pray with you right now as i did for a lot of women that came at the end of the service to the altar let me pray with you right now that god will strengthen you and fill you up again to overflow so that the life of christ in you will touch and begin to touch that man in your life and he will never be the same again Father, I pray for that woman right now who is going through a difficult situation, a difficult relationship. That through the word of Pastor Peter, through the words of Apostle Peter that we heard in 1 Peter 3 today, that their marriage will come alive again. That hope will come alive in her again. And that you will revive. And that you will restore that which the enemy has stolen from her. Father, make her to be the daughter of Sarah that you're calling her to be. So that, that you can get the glory and the devil be mortified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, if you receive that word, why don't you comment at the bottom of your screen? Let me know how much it was a blessing to you so I can rejoice and praise God with you. Or better still, why don't you come and be part of our life services here at Wilma Heights. It's not the same. It's alive and exciting here. We're located on 1687 Victoria Park Avenue, south of Lawrence. And our services is in the sunny, in summer months. We have a combined service at 10.30 a.m. And next Sunday, I want you to tell all the men in your life, whether it's your husband, your boyfriend, your son, they need to be in the house. Because we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, where Peter will begin to talk to the men. And we're going to talk about the five things that your wife, wants you to know but won't tell you and Apostle Peter is going to be helping you to tell him it's going to be good as the table is turned around and you want to invite a man in your life to be here God bless you I love you and have a wonderful wonderful week in Jesus mighty name Amen